Welcome to uh, Gwinnett Woodworkers videos. Uh, we normally are set up in uh, peach tree woodworking videos during our Saturday morning classes and the, the uh, perf being performed in front of a live audience. Oftentimes the, the camera work is not, is meant more for the local audience than it is for the YouTube audience. Uh, so what we're gonna try to do today is to have a video specifically for the YouTube audience. So hopefully have better sound and, and better uh, picture quality than what we have at our uh, live audiences. We're in Rob's workshop today. We, you, if you are subscribed to uh, the Carmichael Workshop YouTube videos, you may have seen a tour through Rob, Rob's shop uh, on one of uh, Steve's past videos that he's done. So that's where we're at today. And what we're going to do today is some, some simple projects that uh, oriented more toward the beginning wood turner. Uh, first, I'm going to work on a handle, the, uh, the, the uh, handles that you have here on the, on the uh, banjo and on the tailstock is kind of short and you don't get a lot of leverage. So I'm going to make a handle, uh, the one that I have, oh here it is, yeah, I've, I've got a, a Delta MIDI lathe at, at, in my home shop and I, it's, it's made to fit on, on either here or here. Well, this, has got a, this is the Jet uh, mini lathe and it's got a, a, a three quarter inch hole instead of a five eighths inch hole. So I'm gonna go through a process of making a handle to use on the, on the lathe to make it give you more leverage on the, on the uh, latch down levers. Okay, so I've got a piece of, uh, I think I've got it labeled here as mimosa. I have not turned mimosa before, so I don't know exactly how it's gonna work, but we'll try it. First thing I wanna do is I'm gonna to put a tenor on here uh, so I can put it in a chuck. And, and, and hold it in the chuck and then drill my hole and then I'll go ahead and shape it down to some sort of a handle shape. A um, bit, bit of safety, uh, minimally you want to wear safety glasses, preferably a full face shield. Also if you're dealing with dry wood where there's a lot of dust, you want to wear dust protection. In this environment though with the microphone and stuff, I wouldn't be able to wear dust protection. At home I've got the, uh, the Trend uh, helmet, air shield helmet that I use all the time, but I always use the full face shield when, I'm, when I've got things turning on the lathe. Okay, does this, can you hear me? Is the sound still okay? Okay, this is a spindle turning. Normally, what you see with spindle turning is, is a spindle roughing gouge to, 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 uh, to shape it down. And you'd, you'd put, you, wanna, you wanna contact the tool rest first then get the bevel rubbing and then raise the handle up until it starts cutting and just move it across and that's the way you would get it down to to, to round, the, round the material off. But since this is already round, what I need to do is I'll make it down, put, I'll put a tenon on this end and, and put it in the chuck. And what I'm going to be using measure, measure the diameter that I've got here and I've got right at two inches, my chuck will go down I think to about seven eighths of an inch. So I've got plenty of room that I can make a small tenon on there and, and be able to grip it in the, in the number two jaws on this chuck. So for this I'm going to be using, a, it's called a bedan tool. It's sort of, sort of, has sort of a trapezoidal cross section. It's just like a big parting tool. But I'm just going to just bring it down, set my calipers, I'll set my calipers to, to the diameter that I want to make the tenon. And the depth of the tenon can't be as deep as what it is from the jaws here. I don't want the bottom of the, of the wood here to be hitting here. I want, want it to be resting on the shoulder up on this surface up here. And for these operations, I run the lathe at about 1800. You know, for, for speed, for, uh, if you look at charts and stuff, you know, depending on the diameter of the piece, the length of the piece, you could probably run the lathe wide open, but I, I, I feel like I can get a good enough cut at 1800 RPMs. You always want to stop the lathe before you move the tool rest. I just moved the tool rest back a little bit because I want it to be resting on, on here instead of back here on the bevel. I want to make sure I got good contact on the surface, on the, the bottom there. Okay. 
and I'm doing a peeling cut. Okay, I've already went down possibly too far already. That's one of the, the, the drawbacks of, of the number, number two jaws are 50 millimeter. That's about the, the, uh, the smallest diameter that you can hold in it is 50 millimeters or about two inches. Uh, for, for small projects, oftentimes your piece is, is too small to fit in these, in these jaws. And I've got some other jaws I'll show you later that you can, uh, and if this is too small, we'll go ahead and use the smaller jaws. So we'll see if we see if that uh, will we'll grip in there now. Here's your knockout bar, Rob. On the right front, right front, right front, right front right. chucks. Oh. That's it. And when you knock, when you, when you use the knock, you don't want to put it out here because the sharp points on there. You don't want to have it out to where that's going to come. You want to just hold it here and give it a little tap and catch it when it comes out. A little bit about the chuck. This is, this is a Nova chuck. Uh, it's a, 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 what's called a Tommy bar chuck. It requires two. It doesn't have a key like, like some chucks do. Some of the more expensive chucks. Like here, here's with a, a key for, for uh, uh, I think this is Supernova, Rob, yeah. for this one. Um, and here's some other chuck keys here for other, other types of, of chucks that have, a for a key. That's a Barracuda chuck key. But this, this, re, this uses Tommy bars. It has the two rings on here that turns, and it's got the holes for the two rings to tighten it. Uh, when I first started turning, I was told that you don't want to use a Tommy bar chuck because you needed three hands to use the things. Well, I believe the person that told me that, and I went and bought a, bought a keyed chuck. I started out with a one-way chuck, a uh, one-way talon. But then I started watching turning videos, and I saw Richard Raffin and Cindy Droja using these Tommy Bar chucks. And the best I could tell from the video, they only had two hands. They were getting by, getting by just fine. So I figured if they can do it, I can do it. So I'm going to show you how easily it is to use these, these chucks that are, have Tommy Bars. Plus for a, for a small lathe like this, they're ideal. Um, these, I think the regular list price on these chucks are about $109. And oftentimes, Craft Supply will have them on sale. I think I bought this one for about $89 from Craft Supply. So it's, 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 a, it's a nice chuck. And the, the thing I like about Nova chucks is the jaws, if you buy jaws for this chuck and then go to a bigger chuck like the G3 or the Super Nova chuck, you can use the same jaws. Whereas on the, the, the one-way uh, Talon chuck, if you buy jaws for the Talon chuck and then you want to go to a bigger chuck like this, the uh, um, slip me what the, what the name of their bigger chuck is, but the same jaws don't fit the two different size chucks. Uh, same way with uh, Vicmark chucks. They have different size, the different size chucks use different jaws. But the Nova chucks, the small, the, the chucks, the, the jaws that use on the smallest chuck will fit the bigger chucks also. And they'll also fit on the Robert Sorby chucks. The, the Robert Sorby jaws and the, and the Nova jaws are all interchangeable with each other. So you have a huge supply, a huge, huge source or, or huge selection of different size jaws that you can put on these chucks. So here's the first thing that you see with this chuck is nice. If, if you have using one of the chucks that's got a key and if, you, if your jaws are off a long ways, you got to sit there like this and, and crank it down. Well, this one you can just quickly hold this ring here and run that ring down and fit it like that. Then I can bring the tailstock up to apply some pressure on it. And this, um, this, this, uh, this lathe has a, a spindle lock. With a spindle lock, you can use a spindle lock. Or if your lathe doesn't have a spindle lock, There's your spindle lock. I can come up with one hand now and tighten it down. Basically, I use one hand instead of three hands. Now, and you can also, you know, the way, the, way the, 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 the holes are aligned here, there's always going to be a pair of holes 
this ring needs to move that way to tighten and this way to loosen, there's always a set of holes that's going to be positioned so that you can put, the, put them in like that and just take one hand and tighten it like that. Same way to loosen it, I can bring it around. I need to move that ring this way. For to loosen it, I put it there and put it there and squeeze it and it'll loosen it. Whereas on the, uh, the one-way, I would say that, that the one-way talon chuck was the first chuck that I bought. You turn it clockwise to tighten, counterclockwise to loosen. Well, the Nova chuck is made south of the equator down in Australia or New Zealand, and it's just opposite. So depending on which chuck you're using, you had to remember which way to turn it, and you always turn it the wrong direction. Well, with this one, that ring goes that way to tighten and this way to loosen. That's all you got to remember. You know, you have to remember which way to turn it. So first, for a small lathe, I really recommend uh, the, these cheaper Nova Chuck. Okay, so we got it, got it centered. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to clean up this end here a bit. I'm still going to provide tailstock support. I'm going to clean up this end, and then we'll, then we'll change this out for a, uh, a drill chuck to drill our hole. And to clean off that end, I'm going to use the dreaded skew. And as far as the, the tool rest height, well, that was one of the questions I always had when I, when I first started, was what height should the tool rest be? Well, it depends on how tall you are, how tall the lathe is, and what, to, uh, what operation you're doing. So in some cases, if I, if I was doing a planing cut up here with the skew, I would need to have the tool rest up this much higher because I'm up here working on the surface up here. But now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in and I want to be able to go in and go down to the center like that. Well, if I had the tool rest up here, I'd have to be coming clear up here like this to get it down. So I want it, you know, a comfortable movement. So I'm going to have the tool rest down a little bit lower and I'm just going to make a, a cut to clean off and give me a nice surface here on this end. Okay, I'm going to use the long point down with the, with the tool rest, rest on there. I'm going to engage it into the point in. Getting a little bit deep there. I'm going to back off and just take a little bit shallower cut. Okay, it's going to be a nice, clean, smooth surface there. Okay, so now I'll back the tailstock off, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and I'll finish that. Just give me enough. Since I've got, I'm not out here on the end, I don't have quite as much leverage. I need, still need to take a fairly shallow cut because I'm out here quite a ways away from the, from the, from the chuck. So I, I don't want to be very aggressive in cleaning the, rest of the remainder of that off. Okay, now I already measured the, the diameter of, of the handles here are three quarters of an inch. So I've got a, a three quarter inch Forstner bit. Then I'm going to drill down about the depth of the Forstner bit just to give me a good, a good uh, a grip on that handle. Okay, now for, for so you, it, with any Forzner bit, you want to you know use use the proper speed for a Forzner bit, and I think probably for a hardwood, just guessing from memory, it's maybe about 300 RPMs is the proper RPMs for drilling. Okay. You always want to hold, it's not so, so much concern when you're going in, but when you're backing it out, you need to, with the Forzner bit, you need to clear it out, clean it out frequently, or otherwise the, the, the fiber, the, the, the wood shavings will jam up inside the hole. So you always want to keep a hold of here so it doesn't pull it out of the chuck. Yep, I think we're going to have to go down to a, a slower speed to give us more torque.
So we're going to move the belts. This is a uh, this this lathe has uh, a series of three belts to give you different speed ranges. And I'll go down to the lowest speed range just so it'll have more torque. And there's about 300, 300 RPMs. Okay, then we went to, went to the depth of the, uh, the, the, the about oh two and a half inches. That should be should be enough leverage for the. Uh, okay, now for to I, I will still want to provide tails talk support, so I want something that's going to fit in that hole. This 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 is the the live center that comes with the midi lace typically, and it's just too, a little bit too large to fit in there. We got another one here I think will work. This is a uh, a pen saver uh, live center, and the taper there well, that'll give me good support inside that tapered hole. Okay, so now it's just a matter of, of giving me a shape, a handle shape that I want. You know, this handle, this, this shape here is that's something like that is all we be aiming for. I'll just sort of taper it down a bit here and take it down to, uh, to about, I got this one's just under an inch and a half in diameter. So I'll take it down. First thing I'll do is I'll take the whole thing down to an inch and a half in diameter and then taper this and round off the back side here. And was, what I used, the tool I used before was on on roughing down with, with, with the spindle roughing gouge going across like that. You can also do a, a peeling type of cut and then we'll go back up to about 1800. The noise you're hearing is that, that, that live center, that's a relatively inexpensive live center so it doesn't have real high quality bearing in it so it does make a noise like that. So you can use this tool in a peeling cut to take off you could, you could sit here like this and, and go for like take wood off gradually. You, could, you can also come in here and make a peeling cut like that and, and you see what happened there. It, what, it, once it gets in, it goes in deep and it's, then it came up here and started getting on this edge here and it, it kicked it back. And what I found, I re recently had a workshop with David Ellsworth and I really, really have gotten to where I really like his bowl gouge. So this, this is a this is not a David Ellsworth gouge, but it's, a, it's got a parabolic flute. It's a five, I think a five eighths or half inch bowl gouge. And it's got a swept back wing like David Ellsworth's grind. I'm gonna show you how to use this to take the wood down very quickly. Okay, we're still at about one and seven eighths almost, so we need to take some more off back here.
Okay. Got one in, in 11 sixteenths. Okay, one and five eighths. And I'm using a bevel rubbing cut here. I've got the bevel on there and then I just engage it. I'm not clear up around the wing, I'm pretty close to the tip. And, and basically using it like a skew. Using a, cutting about a 45 degree angle. Okay, there we go, inch and a half. Okay, so now we'll go, that, that left was a fairly rough cut. So we'll, go, we'll, we'll move over to a skew now to give us a, a smoother cut. Now, again, the tool rest height for that, because I wanted to cut pretty much, I wanted the tool level here cutting to the center. I had the tool rest down at that level so that my, my cutting edge would be coming in at that there. Well, now with the skew, I want to be able to be cutting up here, so I've got to raise the tool rest up a bit. And that's going to give me the, the plane, that might be a little bit too high. Okay, there we go, there's going to give me a easy, bit, nice, nice height for the planing cut. I want to tell you, this is going to be my handle up here, so I'm going to, I'm going to taper it down. Something like that. And again, I'm, I'm putting the tool on the tool rest, bringing it up where it's not cutting, and, and, bend, and then raise the handle and rotate it until I start cutting. And see, so we've got a much, much smoother, nicer surface there with the skew than what we're getting with the, with the gouge. So I think that's, that shape is pretty good there. So now I just need to round this off here. Now you, I could come in with the, with the, with the skew and do that. Uh, I just find I'm much more comfortable using a spindle gouge and, and controlling it uh, with, than, than I am with the skew. So we'll, we'll go to a spindle gouge now. This is a half inch spindle gouge, and it's got about a 45 degree bevel with the wings swept back a bit on it. Now for this, I'm, I'm, gonna, I want, I'm gonna end up down at the center, so I'm gonna need to lower the tool rest down a little bit. I've gotta come clear up like this, so I'll lower the tool rest down a little bit. So when I, when I start out and I come down to center, I won't have to be quite up so high. Are you able to see that okay, Bob, in there? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting on the bevel. And I'm following, following the, I've got to rope, bring, the, bring the, uh, the bevel around so, it, so that the cutting edge is pointing in the direction I want to go to make a nice round or, or bead type cut there.
Okay, the, the half inch tool is a bit big to get down in there where I'm getting closer now, so I'm going to go to a different spindle gouge. Okay, this is a 3 8 spindle gouge, and it's got a much more acute angle on it, probably about a 25 or 30 degree bevel on the angle, plus the heel, the, the, the heel on this tool here, you see how long the heel was there? I've got, and that's going to limit the, the clearance angle I can do. That's my clearance angle to be able to get down in there. But with this tool, I've got a much shallower clearance angle, and I can get down into a finer, finer area. Okay, now if you want to do any sanding, I've got it down to about a quarter of an inch there. If you want to do any sanding, now's the time to do the sanding. And we'll just touch it up a little bit. I've uh, developed a, a, a method of, of storing my sandpaper. I've got a couple pieces of masonite there and they just put a rubber band around it. And I, I take a, a full sheet of sandpaper and I mark it off in a three by three grid and then I cut it and I get nine sheets out, nine pieces out of a, a single sheet of sandpaper. Uh, so I'm going to start out with say about a 120. I'm going to turn the speed down a bit, down to maybe about a thousand. When you when you, you you when you first start sanding, you'll see the little ripples. They'll just sort of pop out. You'll get. You'll get, you know, the shiny bits where the, where the tool, there's a little bit of ripples in the, uh, in the wood, and they really show up, stick up. So it can quickly go down to, uh, I think while I've got a sharp edge here, I think I'll go back before I get any farther, I'll go ahead and take that, that sharp edge off of there also, just to round it off a little bit there now. Um, so I'll just come down and just relieve that, that sharp corner a little bit there. This lathe has got a, uh, a soft start, so it's easy to overshoot your target RPM. Okay, that was uh, 120, and then we'll probably finish off with, with 180. I don't want it to be real slick, so it's hard to grip onto, so I'll go to 180. Okay, I think that'll work as a, a tool handle. Okay, so we'll part it off. And again, we'll go use the, uh, the spindle gouge that I was using before. Remember where I put it, there it is. Now I, could, I could use a parting tool down there to get down in there. I think I've got enough clearance so I can get down in here with this. But it, when it when it cuts loose, it's just gonna it's just gonna stop turning. There's no real danger of it flying anywhere. Okay, and I get a little just a little bit of a nib there on the end. We can clean that up with a with a knife. And we got a handle.